welcome back to Hardy Brothers Outdoors. Josh Hardy here. Uh, today, beautiful day in southeast uh, Ohio. Got some uh, nice blue skies and finally getting some uh, some warmer weather. It's, it's still pretty cold, but uh, bundled up feels pretty good. So today I wanted to talk about five, maybe six things uh, about the front end loader that maybe you don't realize. Hidden features or uh, hidden adjustments that might make your life a little bit easier. I had good luck the other day with the um, five things you need to have before you leave the dealership and I got a great response on that. Uh, in that I also had the request to uh, demonstrate the, um, uh, the quick connect on the hydraulics for the front end loader so we'll do that at the end as well. Um, actually we might do that in the middle and then split up the, the, uh, the hidden features. And uh, in addition to that, I'm probably going to throw in a couple tips because there's a few things that I'm not sure I'd call them a hidden feature or not, but other people, uh, I've seen them that refer to them. So uh, I'm going to mention them uh, maybe as, as tips or tricks. So let's get into it with the, uh, the first hidden feature. All right, so we're going to start off really simple for the first one. This is one that I didn't realize existed. Uh, there's this little pin here in your... Uh, your pins for the front end loader uh, are usually attached to a cable. Mine broke off, I let them dangle all the time, and uh, at some point they broke off, had to replace them. What I didn't realize is this little hole right here is a storage place for those pins. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is going to be this metal bar that you see across the back here. And uh, that bar, is actually like a timing bar. It's supposed to help the paddles on the front end loader uh, stay in sync uh, because you've got hydraulic fluid going to one before it goes to the other and they get a little bit out of sync. Makes it a little bit harder to uh, to put your bucket on. Takes a little bit of practice. I struggle mostly with the load and go uh, with the buckets and the pallet forks. Not too big of a problem. But when I received it, there was a pin on both ends. And uh, when I had sent it back to John Deere for some service, I asked them to synchronize the paddles. They actually replaced that pin with a bolt. And uh, it, it was good for a couple weeks, and then it got out of sync again. So uh, not a huge issue for me, but that's the that's where the adjustment sits. So you can replace that pin with a, with a bolt. I'm not going to go into too much detail because somebody just recently posted a, a video where they showed this on the 1025R and the 2038R. Um, but that's a... A good thing to know about because uh, it can be a little frustrating okay the next tip number three is going to be this metal bar here it goes up there's a bend in it right here and what that bend is for which is, I didn't know this until I think Jason pointed it out to me when you're operating the bucket and you're trying to get your bucket level since you can't see the ground in front of you if you put that bend right in the corner or right at the edge, you're going to be level. So that right there is tip number three. Okay, tip number four has got to do with the float function. So that allows the bucket to go all the way down and then float on the ground. So I used this a lot when I was plowing snow. It just keeps it from digging in. But uh, all you do there is grab hold of the joystick and push it forward and then push it again harder and it'll stay right there and the bucket will slowly lower down. Okay, so hidden feature number five, uh, if you could call this a feature, uh, are these little holes right here. There's one on each side. And what I've seen people use them for are either uh, to mount a mirror or a handle and uh, on this side where the step is would be the side that you're going to mostly go up and down so that would be the best one for the handle and the other side for the mirror I haven't done that yet uh, I'm not sure that I will and I'm not sure if that's actually what they're made for if you have any other ideas on what uh, you've seen people or that you've done personally install one of those why don't you let us know Okay, so those were the five tips. I said I was going to throw in a bonus one, uh, and I know these aren't rocket science, so um, hopefully you don't feel like I'm uh, 
pointing out things that are obvious to everyone. Uh, actually, the next one, I did see somebody had a, a question about this the other day. I didn't realize that it actually existed. So um, let me hop up in the, uh, in the tractor and I'm going to show you this one. Okay, so number six, the bonus one here is going to be the lock for the front end loader. So um, I did see someone the other day who uh, didn't realize that my, my loader won't curl, won't go up, won't go down. Not sure what's going on. And, um, you know, I was actually pleased to see in the, in the forum, folks were very civil to him because uh, not everybody realizes this stuff. I, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the tractor. Yeah, you can read the manuals, but uh, there's a lot of manuals for each piece. Um, and so when you're new to it, you may not actually use it, so you may not realize it for a while. But this lock, what it does is you push in on it, and it's going to prevent the joystick from going in any direction. So you could be locking a, a load that you're carrying so that it doesn't drop. Uh, if you're mowing or something, like we use these, we leave the forks or the bucket on when we're brush hogging and we'll uh, lock the bucket a little bit higher. It also helps push down stuff, gives us a little bit of view of uh, what's coming up. And we use it a lot of time to move uh, trees, fallen, fallen trees or rocks out of the field uh, if we need to. So. Um, we'll use the lock to keep it from dropping because you need to be careful if you're moving along at any speed It's a good idea to lock it as well because if it drops uh, It could uh, you know, you could go launching into the the steering wheel uh, and get hurt severely So um, I've got just a couple more tips I'm going to talk about and then uh, we'll wrap things up with the uh, the demo of the quick uh, disconnect, okay, so the the final one that I want to talk about was uh, as a tip is Anytime you're taking hydraulics off on the tractor, uh, you've got to relieve the pressure on the overall hydraulic system. And the best way that I've found to do that is when you turn the tractor off, move the uh, the joystick around in 360, you know, back and forth a couple times around until your bucket stays completely flat, stops moving. And at that point, you know you've, you've relieved the pressure off of all of the connections and things will go on uh, easier each time. Okay, so we talked about the quick disconnect on the, um, the front end loader. Uh, let's see, relieve all the pressure. Make sure we've got it all. Okay, bucket's flat. Everything is good. I'm gonna wiggle the hydraulics on the backhoe as well. All right, pressure's re released. So it's got a little red button here that you push in. I'm gonna push that in, lift up. That's it. That's how quick and easy it is to, to release four of these. And uh, as I mentioned, I don't take it off that, that often, but um, it goes right back on. There's a couple guide holes there. Get it lined up, push it down. We're connected again. It is very quick. Let's do that up close one more time here. Push in the red button, lift, separate. That's what you look like on the bottom. That's what you got on the top. Hold that open, put it back in. And we're back in pretty cool feature i hope you found this useful and i just want to remind everyone to uh to make sure you keep those loads low and slow keep them low to the ground and travel slow uh no big rush the the front end loader can be one of the most dangerous uh attachments in terms of rollovers and tip overs uh, we've got some video about that that jason's done on the uh, the smaller frame tractor uh, the 1025R, and, uh, and use ballast. So um, thank you so much. Hope you have a great day. And uh, hit that like, subscribe, leave us a comment, uh, tell your friends about it. And uh, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.